Hello and welcome to earlymusicsources.com. My name is Elam Otem, and today we'll make a short tutorial on how to play Acciaccature e Mordenti according to Francesco Gasparini. In the episode about the Italian basso continuo in the second half of the 17th century, we showed some nice examples of Acciaccature. If you haven't watched it, be sure to check it out. The first source to sufficiently explain this subject is Gasparini's L'Armonico Pratico al Cimbalo from 1708. Gasparini writes that playing full with a chacature gives admirable effects when accompanying recitatives or canti gravi, serious songs. Later on, however, he writes that such playing is necessary for playing in good taste in general, and therefore could be used also for the accompaniment of arias and canzonas. The first thing to add when playing full is mordenti. Not to be confused with the French or German mordents we all know very well, the Italian mordent is a note that should be played either together or slightly before a chord and then released quickly. Both Gasparini and the anonymous source described it as a bite of a harmless little animal. Gasparini is rather strict with where a mordent should be played. One. It could be played below the octave, like so, or the same in a minor chord. Although he doesn't say it explicitly, in all his examples where the mordent is on the octave, there is also the third above it. It seems then that having the mordent without it might be wrong, as well as having it in a position where the fifth is on top. 2. A mordent could be played below the third of a chord, like so. In this case, Gasparini explicitly says that it can be added only in a position where the fifth is on top, and also that it is most often used in minor chords. That means that this and this are wrong according to him, and that this is not used often. 3. A mordent could be played below the sixth in a sixth chord, like so, or similarly in a minor chord. He warns the reader, however, that the mordent on the sixth might create cattiva relazione, bad relation, like in the case of a penultima chord of a tenor cadence. In terms of positions, he doesn't say anything, but none of the examples he gives have the mordent on the top note, so this might be wrong according to him. Acciaccature are clusters of notes that, according to Gasparini, create an admirable effect. Trying to summarize his points, we see that most of his acciaccature are in the context of what we call nowadays dominant chords. In addition to the seventh we all know, he adds also the fourth. These two additional notes can be added in all the inversions of the dominant chord. Here is the first inversion. And here is the second inversion. In this case, it's a bit confusing, because the basic note of the chord, the E, is now a dissonance to the bass and considered as an acciaccatura, but practically it has the exact same notes of the former chords. Here is the third inversion. Also here it might seem confusing, but again, practically all these chords have the same notes. It should be noted that Gasparini does not use the term dominant chord, nor mention the concept of inversions. Usually we prefer to use historical terminology, but following Gasparini on this might be a bit confusing. Check it out for yourself. Apart from the dominant chords, there is a special situation found sometimes in recitatives that demands a certain acciaccatura. The bass is on the sixth degree, and in addition to the third and the sixth, Gasparini adds the fourth and the augmented second. We've seen that chord quite a few times in the anonymous treatise.
you're probably wondering how come the fourth in the left hand stayed like that. In the chapter about cadences, Gasparini describes such a situation, where the fourth is doubled in both hands, but only the right hand resolves it. He describes it in a context of a 6-4 cadence, and also says that it is actually an acciaccatura. Otherwise, there are some acciaccature in his examples that are not explained in the text. He doesn't treat his instructions as hard rules, and encourage students to find new acciaccature. He says that while practicing, he found that it is possible to play a chord with 14 notes, pressing two keys with one finger. This is found in a context of a recitative, where the dominant chord comes when the bass stays on the tonic. So this was our short tutorial about acciaccature. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check the special page on our website with all the footnotes and summaries. Feel free to comment, share and like. See you next time at earlymusicsources.com.